on the seventh day, God gave us, or what, 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 man, I, I sound like a really bad Christian now. On the, the seventh, seventh day, day God, God gave us nothing. Light, or he rested. Day. He rested. He did nothing Fine. on the seventh day. Whatever it is where he says, let there be light, that's what it is. The very first day, is yes. Is that the first day? <laughs> that's arguably the first thing that's that the ever first happened. verse in the Bible. The very first thing. <laughs> Might be the first thing that ever happened, ever. In, hum- in human history. And, and, and you that's Guinness say, World Record, baby. You wanted to say, and God said, let there be, and you light, wanted to And then we'll put cores like above it. <laughs> <laughs> that was way too long of an explanation for such a little That's got to be blasphemous. A little bit. Let there be cores light. <laughs> Stupid. But, All right. Okay. No, he didn't do it on the seventh day because he rested. Okay. okay. He enjoyed. Well, now that that's, enjoyed. Now that that's oh. out of the way. Okay. Um, I got a pretty... Pretty good story to, I guess, start us off following that up. <laughs> well, I, I vote we just cut that whole. Like, no, 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 no. That whole dude. thing that makes you look dumb. <laughs> that doesn't make me look dumb. Everything else I say makes me look dumb. I don't need any help from that. All right, so this this story I'm about to tell you guys happened probably a couple months ago, and I just remembered it, <laughs> and it's. All right. This is so I don't know why it's one of those things. Again, I think I have this thing, or I guess a lot of people do. Where something happens, and then like a week later, you're like, you realize, or maybe this wasn't a week, it was probably a couple hours later, I realized how it looked. So, what happened was, I opened our front door at our house, and I, th- I think it was a bee. There was either a really, like, or wasp. It was like a big wasp flying around our door, or it was like a big spider, but I'm almost positive it was a wasp, okay? So, this wasp was out there, and we were needing to like go outside for something, or I was just wanting to kill it point is i was trying to kill it okay and i had a shoe okay so i'm gonna have to stand up to visualize show you guys this visually okay so i'm at our door our uh, our door and um there's a wasp flying and i'm smacking at it okay and then this dog comes up to me just stray dog or not a stray just a random dog comes up to me and then i'm like i'm like and then I'm like doing this, and then the owners pull up, and I'm like this <laughs> at their dog, and they're like, "Hey, he's okay, he's nice." And I was like, "What?" And then I continue to start swatting that wasp, when the dog runs away. And then later, I was like, "That was weird, man." And then I realized it looked like I was probably trying to beat the crap out of their dog with my shoe. <laughs> I was like, oh, now it all makes sense. All it makes clicks. Sense but you'll never get a chance to explain that to them. No, I have no idea who that was. I was saying like a week ago where it's like something happens, okay. you don't you realize are, until uh... later. And and you'll never get a chance to explain it or anything. No. Yeah. yeah. You it's never. Gone. It never comes back. And even if you do, it doesn't make it any better because it just looks like you're trying, trying to, to explain it away. Yeah. Because yeah. you trying also noticed it. Yeah, you yeah. noticed it in the first By place. By the way, I was not trying to hit your dog with my shoe. <laughs> Promise. It was so, a bee. There was That's a, what I would say, uh, yeah. too, if I was trying to hit a dog. There was a... Uh, I was out on the patio working at the restaurant, and I was I had this table out there, and a wasp was kind of flying around, and I was kind of joking around with them. I was like, I ain't want none, dude. I was like, I don't want no smoke, because there was like a kid there who it was like right here. I was like, I don't want no smoke. And then the wasp like kind of came at us on the table. I was like, oh, God. Oh. <laughs> I backed up and I just went inside. You actually <laughs> didn't want any. It turns out <laughs> I just left them. Look, uh, there are many things I will, I will attempt to handle at work. Okay, gunman, gunman comes in. I'll, I'll try and hop on that. If you sit outside, you are open to the wilderness. You accepted that. Fate. Yeah, you yeah. are out there on your own. I that chose. There's bugs this. outside, and that's yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> and, then, and that's yeah. it. You did this to yourself. <laughs> There was one time in high school, this was like one of the few things I, I remember all the time. Um, we were in the rotunda and um, I was with, it was after lunch, so we were just waiting for the bell to ring and there I was with JT and there was a girl that me and JT both thought was cute and she was like walking in between us, but I didn't realize until the words were leaving my mouth that in the loudness of the room, if you don't really pay attention, her name also sounds exactly like JT. Uh, and yeah. so I say, I say, hey, JT, because I'm trying to like be like, hey, like talk yeah. to this girl. And she whips her head and looks <laughs> directly in my eyeballs. <laughs> and I was just like, I didn't look at her. I just kept going to JT. <laughs> 
but I think about that all the time. <laughs> we, There's just I, no saving that. Yeah, no. Charlie and I were watching some like scary videos or whatever last night before we went to sleep, and I was kind of thinking about. I was like, so I'm waiting for the day where I come out of my room late at night to go take a whiz or something, and the sliding glass doors right there. And I look outside, and somebody's just looking right at me. And then we're just like, like, what do I do? We have the staring match. We're sitting there. What do it? Do I? Do I? Like, do Engage. I make bri- Do I break eye contact to go out there or something? Because if I break eye contact, they're kind of the alpha, right? So yeah. mm-hmm. I just sit Absolutely. there. We just have a staring match. What? What? What happens from there? And then what he finds the out step? it's just his reflection. You just back up. <laughs> yeah. You just, you just back up in your room. <laughs> like, like, just like, and hope it's dark like enough. Peter on Family Guy, just, yeah, yeah, <laughs> disappears in the. That's, yeah. I, uh, I can't remember what the instance was, but kind of recently, within the last few weeks, in the middle of the night, um, probably around midnight, I don't know. Uh, Ash wakes me up for some reason. I can't remember what it was, but she thought she like heard something. I, that's what it was. It wasn't even that late. Like we were just in bed, and it was like eleven thirty, and like we, seven we had just like fallen asleep, and she's like. I hear something, and I was like, no, you don't. Go back to sleep. And then, you know, five minutes later, she's like, babe, I, I need you to go check. I hear something. I was like, what do you hear? And so that's irrelevant. So I get up, and then, you know, if she says she hears something, I kind of trust her. So I grab my flashlight, and I grab my gun. So I go out there, and then I realized – I did, dude. I did that. <laughs> I had – because right when you run right around the corner of our room, you can see the back – the back window mm-hmm. and I remember specifically Ash is weird about um, or OCD about wanting to keep the blinds shut at night like she doesn't want anyone to be able to see in her house at night even though it's dark and uh, I remember that night right before I went to bed I looked behind me and I saw that the windows were the shades were open and I was like I'm not sure and so I go to bed and then I'm about to round this corner I was like oh. I was like the blinds are open and so I'm like, I, I fully expect to see someone there. And I'm like, mm, I'll turn around, dude. And there's nothing there. Real <laughs> high alert over here. <laughs> I was, dude. <laughs> I was ready to shoot, dude. It's just your neighbor's but dog. You just blast recon. him. Yeah, it's you that one. <laughs> blast it's the that dog. One. Yep. Oh, man. I'm just, uh, but I, I want it to be known that um, I was talking to a coworker. I sent it in the group text. Uh, so you you know who it is. Um, and he... Uh, <laughs> I was talking to him. I brought it up. So apparently, there's more people at work that are direct coworkers of mine in my sales team that uh, are on this Q and on thing. Okay, so we had talked about it. I kind of brought it up to like some people. I was like, "Hey, what do you think about this?" And like, come to find out, you know, <laughs> you got material. I wrote some things down. <laughs> I, wanted, I, wanted, I wanted to remember. They're unrelated, but that just reminded me of it. And he was like, "Wait, wait, you've got pen and paper." And yeah, you wrote it down. Hold okay. on, hold on. We'll get All to right. it. So right. anyway. I start talking to him about it, and then he's like, look, dude, Q has predicted all this kinds of stuff, man. He predicted when John McCain was going to die, okay? And, like, they were saying all this stuff, and I was like, how? Like, literally, I was like, how? So is he a psychic now? Or? I was like, well, So I was like, what did he say? And uh, they're like, you just have to look it up, dude. You have to look it up. I was like, no. I was like, tell me what he said. Did he say John McCain is going to die on this day or whatever? And they're like, no, no, no. He uses, like, codes and this and this. You just have to look it up. They like, could not tell me anything. So I was getting under his skin, you know, the big, big pale guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was like, oh, big oh, pale. I suppose you don't believe in Pizzagate either. <laughs> 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 so he's he's been on me for the last two days about Pizzagate. He sent me an hour and a half long documentary about it. It's like, the best when they try to insult you, but they only use references that yeah, they would understand. Yeah. And then the same it's thing like happened. An, it's like anime fans when they're like, "You've never seen Hiroshi Miyamoto," and you're just like, "No," what? and they're like, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> of, course. of course." And then the same thing, dude. That's what I've noticed about everyone in my work is they'll say something like that, and I'm like. I was like, what is Pizzagate? You know, I know what we talked about. It's pretty much, you know, like a human trafficking, you know, kids thing in a pizza parlor basement, more or less. And uh, like, he was like, there's so much more to it. And I was like, well, like what? He's like, you just have to look it up. And <laughs> I was like, dude, I was like, until you give me some concrete facts or something, I was like, I'm not, I've got nothing for you, man. And they all think that everyone in Hollywood's uh, Luciferian. And drink baby blood, and they have that makes horns sense. that they hide, yeah. and yeah, yeah. Nice. I was like, you know, maybe some of them do that. I was like, but he thinks like all of them are in on that. Yeah. So, so which is more likely though, Pizzagate or that the country's ran by lizard people? P- 
Pizzagate. Pizzagate. You think so? Well, Here's because Pizzagate, Pizzagate isn't actually a thing. It's a loose collection of a ton of things that they just put under the same and umbrella. And here's what I told them. They're so adamant on the fact that it happens in a pizza parlor. I was like, look, dude. I was like, I'll buy into the fact. And I know, you know, there is like human or like like child trafficking and stuff going on. I said, I, I buy that, you know. And yeah. since Jeffrey Epstein happened, it's probably happening within some higher ups. Okay, I get it. I was like, but the fact that it's supposedly happening in the basement of a pizza parlor, I said... It's a little far out there for me. I don't okay? buy that part. <laughs> yeah. I, that's just the one part like, I don't that's buy. That's the one part that makes him so mad. No, but that that's the that's the part that makes the most sense. Yeah. Okay. Nobody suspects CP! the pizza CP! place. CP. CP. It's CP. All right, dude. I'm I'm dying to hear this. Uh, well, what I was gonna say was my rule of thumb is if your conspiracy is so convoluted that we can't sit across from a table and you can't yeah. explain it to me, yeah. yeah, it's probably not real. It's all. Yeah. Out the it's probably not yeah. real, huh? Yep. Have you seen? Okay, so have you seen that picture of the iceberg? Yes. And yes. then it just goes deeper, and there's just like it has text all over it. Yeah. So a picture, one of those <laughs> pictures, got posted to the conspiracy subreddit earlier last week, I think. And so a lot of them are jokes, yeah. which, are like, <laughs> which are like Bigfoot's a lesbian. Like you'll just be scrolling down and you'll see that. Just random example, or like trees are mammals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, are they just trying to get me to Google this? I don't know. But some of them I did Google. And one of them I found that actually, I don't know why this scent chills up my spine, but it did. And it's so stupid. And I hope you guys don't think it's stupid. I can't remember what I wrote down. Okay. Kids cereal boxes. So, you, yes. know, you know, you know, in Walmart, cause you're, like your mom works there. She does this kind of stuff. They place things... In strategic yeah. locations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. They put People children's cereal like, okay, okay, yeah. lower down, and then at the bottom is the great value stuff because they want to have the cheaper stuff, but they don't want it to be the first thing adults see, right? Yeah. So you buy the name brand, but the great value is on the bottom, right? Right. They put kids' stuff in the middle so that it's at kids' eye level, kids and younger, right? Because you go up. You don't go down. You go up when you grow. So... This there was a news article. This is a news article talking about this analysis of marketing to children or whatever, and it had like tens of pictures of children's cereal, and all of the cartoon characters on the cereal box are looking in the same direction. They're all looking down. Oh, that's weird. Down at the kids, so that the kids can look up okay, and, and make, make eye contact. contact. Oh my gosh! I was like, was that- oh. What does that imply? Well, so they did a study and they found out that if the box looks out like at an adult, then they have they're like 20% more trusting in that brand. And so imagine you're a dumb kid. Imagine how much more trusting you, you are. See the tr- tricks rabbit. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you make eye contact and they showed a side by side and one is the tricks rabbit looking directly out at you and the other one is the box that it is and I'm like oh I kind of see that yeah but it's so creepy wow. see, the, the lucky leprechaun just like like the leprechaun <laughs> toucan Sam the rabbit the Dude, Flintstones don't, don't Flintstones. Bad about toucan? Listen, I'm t- not talking toucan's, bad it was just really creepy I don't even cool, remember dude. what else I wrote yeah, he, down he's, he's, he's toucan's real, cool he's a, you hang he's, out with him on the weekends yeah, dude, he's the 422 can oh did you guys see the the Netflix thing with cuties did you guys I, see yeah, that I heard about I it you haven't heard of that? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh. I, no I wish we could pull oh, up the picture of it. It's so it's this movie. I think it's from Spain about an eleven-year-old girl. Is it a movie or like a documentary? It's a movie. It's a oh, scripted okay. movie. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. About an eleven-year-old girl who defies her family tra- traditions and joins a twerking dance group. Nice. An eleven-year-old girl. Is this a Netflix original? It, they bought it from Sundance. They, nice. It won a Sundance Film Festival, and so everybody. I hate that I'm googling this. Everybody was bashing it. Like everybody was bashing it. It was trending on Twitter. Oh, yeah, it's almost no, like eleven year old bunch of oranges. That's what I was thinking. Just you'd cuties get. Netflix. <laughs> and the, the poster. I literally was thinking that's what you were gonna. Get. You have to see the poster because it's the the poster is the egregious part. Like yeah. I'm sure. I've at, seen it before. Yeah. As okay. tame as that concept can be, I'm sure it's that tame. Yeah, I'm sure it's not straight up. 11? It's it's like it's yeah. like it's like uh, what's what's that? What are those other dancing movies? Um, so so they put step a movie, up, step up. Yeah, it's it's like but that with little girls, with little girls, pre-pubescent so girls, like this, and then they ask themselves, why do guys like Epstein go for women like this? 
Go for little girls. <laughs> they women. do stuff. Yeah, women, oh he says. Sorry. Oh, boy. <laughs> little girls, women, a female. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> why, why do they... Chad, you're going to open up a whole can of worms, too. Well, so they bought it because it was a it, uh, one at Sundance. Did guess, you see? guess who's a pedophile? Mr. Sundance. The founder of Sundance Mr. Film Sundance. Festival. Oh, of course. So, so he went to my point, yeah? He got charged. He, like, he got charged. It's not just allegedly he's a diddled kids. No, he, like, he's... <laughs> <laughs> he got charged in a court I was like, for being see, a pedophile. Do you guys see? I saw something. It's probably in relation to that. I saw a couple days ago. It was like some dude. I don't know if he was with customer service for Netflix or if he was interviewing someone from Netflix. <clears throat> and um, he said, does Netflix... He asked a couple questions. And the last question was, does Netflix um, like support or stand by child molesters or pedophilia it was in response yeah. to yeah. cuties he, yeah i thought yeah. so and he and they're like you know a simple yes or no will do and like and it would they're like but yeah you know netflix say. can't really you know yeah. speak for everyone i was like <laughs> this isn't a political stance <laughs> yeah this is... do you support diddling kids or not and that's it well it's <laughs> really up in the air uh it could kind of go either way um, i suppose you believe pizza games like, fake I, too. Is, is trump president <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I and he, know. so get this. This is kind of, I don't know why I just thought about this. This is back to the whole Pizza Gate thing. He, like, so when I watched the Jeffrey Epstein doc, it was saying how, like, the Clintons um, and, like, Trump were, like, friends and all that with Jeffrey Epstein. And so the Clintons are some people that are heavily alligated um, in this whole Pizza Gate thing, okay? Mm -hmm. And I told him, you know, everyone's pretty right winged. I was like, you know, if that's the case, that means Donald Trump probably is too. Yeah. And like, no, he's clean. No, no. I was like, you no, are no. so biased, dude. So I was like, <laughs> the the worst part is that you unfortunately can't make that point because Epstein, he did get charged with what was it, soliciting yeah, prostitution from a minor. Stuff. He got charged with that in like two thousand four or five, mm -hmm. and the DA, the guy who prosecuted him, representing the state. He said the only person he could get in contact with who knew Epstein that would help him at all was Donald Trump. See, okay, he said something like that. I just don't know if he was full of crap. I, I mean, I, I wish it was as simple as saying we need to completely just burn everybody who's ever been in a picture with these people. Yeah. But it's, I mean, he knew everybody. Yeah, yeah. And, like... We know what was her name, Ghislaine? Ghislaine. What are we saying? How did you say it? He would it's, like it's push Ghislaine. her into pictures with people. Ghislaine. Ghislaine. Yeah. Ghislaine. Ghislaine. Yep. Ghislaine. Ghislaine. Yeah. Just creepy. They're a creepy point, bunch. Because at one point, I was talking to somebody else and I was like, oh, how did he say it? I was like, maybe he was saying it weird, like Elaine, but like it's a weird way to say it. It's getting, mm -hmm. getting close. Yeah. Ghislaine. It's on the way there. Ghislaine. Ghislaine. That's how we were saying it. That, yeah, that is how we were saying it. Ignorance. I just say Maxwell now. And I feel like nobody knows what I'm talking about. No, no. Yeah. Uh, Nobody who, like, like if I ever get a phone call or something like that, and they're like, "Is this Chad Wonderful?" <laughs> like, like, uh, like they slow down so, so fast. Chad so, like, Wonder I've noticed glue. a thing at work when I have customers, like specifically a couple, like a, a husband and wife. Um, actually, only husband and wife because unmarried couples don't do this. <clears throat> I've noticed, like, I always like I don't always, but I try to ask people their name. Because, you know, it helps make a connection, all that business. And um, I'm always like, and what, what's y'all's name? What's y'all's names? Mm -hmm. And they always say their last name. I'm like, I don't want your last name. They're like, yeah. uh, Jones. I was like, uh, hey, jo you want me to come say, hey, Jones? Yeah. They think you're like writing it down. Yeah, for I'm not. I'm like, no, no, what's your first names? I'm like, oh, Steve and, and Shauna. I was like, okay, thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Okay, you just exactly, uh, I was going to bring that up, like, because I mean, it's it's a sign of respect to call them by their last name. So that's probably what they were expecting. Is whenever you ask for their names, they give them their last name, and then you're you're supposed to call them Mister and Mrs. Jones. I don't know the way they do it though. It's like, it's like they're. It's not like oh, you know, we're the Joneses. It's not like that. It's like it's like Will said. They're they're thinking I'm writing it down to go in our records. This is for your microchip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is your guys' opinion on getting the whole microchip in your hand thing? I don't, I don't it, think it's, it's a cool it's, so here's the thing I don't, I, I don't, I don't think don't. I would ever do it but yeah. it's like a cool concept for certain things like something I saw it for not I, we might not be on the same page here without some explanation on my end so you can get one in your like hand that's like a fob to get in your house yeah yeah see that's I, I think that's cool not the kind that has like all your whatever I don't know what the other your stuff identity. is yeah. yeah but I thought that's a kind of a cool concept to like never have a key and just 
Get your way in your house. Well, I mean, there's even, I mean, there's there's doors, there's locks and stuff now that you just use your phone. Your ID or, yeah. or, your, phone or your fingerprint you or something. Yeah. Scan your, like, it's like, it's the same phone, thing, but no surgery. I like, yeah. I can't think of the last time I was I've anywhere always, and I well, didn't have my even, phone. It's, not, the ones, it's not even a surgery. It's just I mean, a big old like fat. A, it's just, yeah, it's just like a syringe. And it's like a, it's like a one gauge needle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's gotta be like this thick. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what do you do to fucking feel it around in there or what? Yeah, I'm yeah, sure you could. Things, yeah, I don't. So, I mean, well, I don't what, know what how it compares to like the chips that like the dogs get. But when we got Brody microchipped, like right after we got him chipped, I could feel it on the yeah. back because he, he's got such thin hair, and it feels like a grain of rice on yeah. yeah. the skin. Um, it didn't move around. It anything, would bug but me, I, dude. Yeah, I'd be able to feel it. Well, and so the other thing, where would it be in your hand? In it's the, between the these bones right yeah, here. Okay. The fleshy oh, part. Is there any chance like if you were doing maybe hard work or something, pushing something that you could? I'm it? sure you could. There's no I'm way sure they've tested always, it that yeah. much. Yeah. The people who are getting microchips aren't working out. Let's be honest. It's not that demographic <laughs> not doesn't. <laughs> that demographic doesn't <laughs> cross working much. Working with their hands. Yeah, they're not construction yeah. workers. Yeah, they're doing this all day. <laughs> <laughs> they're not working. So it's gonna cramp hands. up in there. It's gonna yeah. Oh, it oh microchip cramp. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so I got a, I got a few questions for you guys. All right, I got a few. Um, so whenever you get your cereal, whenever you, you, you cereal you first, then milk. Cereal first, then milk. Okay, is that is that pretty? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're not okay. Psychos. Yeah. Okay. When you go to the bathroom and you wash your hand, wash your hands. Both cereal hands. first, then milk. <laughs> yes, cereal first. <laughs> Soap or water first? Water. Uh, I don't think I I don't think I do the same thing every time. Now that I think about it, this is for washing our hands. Yeah. When what, you're, when, you're when you, Chad's like, what is that? So <laughs> no, so no. I'm just saying, so, like, so, so do you put water on your hands first, or do you put soap on your hands first? So before I before you put soap, soap and then soap water. and then water. Okay. See, I, I foam, used... foam soap like with the pump. If it's foam, foam first. But if at, at home I turn it on, water, soap, water. See, I've always, water, I soap, used water. to do okay. soap first, uh-huh. and then someone told me that it's more effective to kind of have your hands a little wet before you run. Uh, moist. I don't know if that's true or not. I was told, and ever since then, I do it. Okay. What about when you brush your teeth? I do... Uh, Cereal first. <laughs> wet, I think... <laughs> so, I, I usually do... I'm weird, dude. I think I'm in the minority in this one. I wet my toothbrush, then put my toothbrush I wet down. the toothbrush. I wet the toothbrush and then put toothpaste okay. on it. Toothpaste on first. Okay. Go straight to There's the no reason to wet it first, but I still do it. Yeah, well, and the reason I don't wet it first is because if I wet it at all, uh, when I'm brushing my teeth, then you're going to have wet toothpaste running down the thing yeah, all and over I your do. hand. Yeah, and I do, and no, you're right, I just, and I do. I just do hmm. just the toothpaste hmm. and then water. Okay. Interesting. Sometimes we do things that don't make sense. Now, yeah. You got anything else for us? Um... It's kind of along the lines. Uh, not really. Do you guys brush your teeth like at the sink or in the shower? At the oh, sink. I do it in the shower now. Do you? Just to because it's so much time. better. It's just a routine. It's you know? so much better. My wife yeah. makes fun of me for. Do you leave your teeth. toothbrush in the shower? Yes. I well anymore. <laughs> I don't. I I I I mainly brush my teeth at the sink now. But I mm. prefer it in the shower. If yeah. I had like a holder, like if I put like a suction yeah, cup holder on the only time on the, I don't do I it in the shower, keep it in the shower. The I would time, do that if I had one. The only time I don't do it in the shower is if like, so I, I shower generally every morning. But if there's ever some weird instance where I'm in a hurry, don't have time to shower or something weird like that, then I'll obviously brush it in the sink. Do y'all, do y'all shower in the morning or at night? You said in the morning. I shower both. Yeah. I shower twice a day. I, I usually try I, to do that. I do it in the evening. I shower in the morning. I would I skip it in the morning my, if my hair would recover, but it doesn't ever recover. That's the biggest reason why I do it too. Yeah, because I, like, which it's this kind of short, it's not a big deal, but like, it's become habit because when my hair was long, when I woke up, my hair is not the kind of hair that I can just wake up and fix. Yeah, there's it's nothing. Got to get wet. There's yeah. nothing I can do. Yeah. I usually, well, my kind of job, I I get sweaty yeah, and get dirty sweaty. every single That's day. That's the thing. So I, I might should start I don't showering twice showering in the morning. Yeah, Ash didn't want me showering twice though, because she thinks it's a waste. But you know, I get I get pretty sweaty during the day. Like, I get I guess if I like work out later in the day, you know, I get sweaty. Mm-hmm. And I walk around at work, I, dude. I walk so much at work. I didn't realize how much. Wait, I wait, walk wait. At you work. work out, and then you don't shower before work. Like you don't. No, so sometimes ideally, like so, like this morning, I woke up at like five and I went to the gym, and then I came back, you know, and I showered before work. 
But okay. sometimes, which I haven't been recently, but sometimes, um, well, I guess, you know, I do it a little more often. So on my days off, you know, I'll wake up and I have to watch my daughter until like noon or one, depending on when Ash gets home. And then I'll go to the gym. But usually I shower in the morning. I don't shower when I'm done at the gym, which I, sh- I probably, which I'm saying I probably should, you know. Yeah. But I try to always work out at night and then I'll shower right after working out, even if it's like, yeah. I say yeah. night, if it's like 4 30, I'll shower right after working out. Yeah. And then, and then I won't shower if, at if like get, 10. If I get really sweaty, so generally when I lift, I don't get that sweaty. I don't know why. But obviously if I run, I get super sweaty and yeah. then I'll shower because it's terrible. Well, this is very uninteresting. Yeah, this was <laughs> this, this was, was such a, a more deep. Kind of went off. I feel like oh. there has to, if we did a huge psychological analysis, there would be patterns yeah. between the the hand, the water before the soap, and then like whether or not you were bottle fed as a baby or something. It would be something <laughs> really weird. Well, so like all all three huh. of you did water then soap. No, I do soap and then water. So you do it like how I do it. Yeah, I so I pump I pump it into one and th- and that's the thing is like I pump it into one hand mm-hmm. and then I turn on the water with the other hand then I rub it all Before together. Before your hands are wet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then I, I rub it underneath. Well, the I was gonna say water. if all three of you all did that, then all three of you also water, then toothpaste. Mm. I'm pretty uh, sure I'm the only one so. that doesn't do the hand wash thing. You yeah. you. Uh, it depends so. on what kind of soap. If I know I'm getting foam soap, <laughs> we're yeah. getting into again the most non-interesting yeah. part. <laughs> so, uh, what kind of aliens, soap right? and I'm <laughs> using in the shower? Was well, that all your notes? Uh, well, there's another thing. I I think it's kind of it's too cer- cerebral. I was I was listening to a really I don't know if it's that old, maybe two years old Joe Rogan podcast with a quantum physicist. What's the name? And I don't remember. Remember? I, I bet I remember. watched some of that. It one was a clip. He was talking about this. Um, this idea called Laplace Demon. There was an old physicist in the 1700s who theorized that if you were like an omnipotent being, this is just a thought experiment. This isn't like a scientific theory. This is like an idea to consider. Okay. At at the it's it's more of a f- philosophical thing, like like a humanitarian thing, and not as scientific. But he was like, if you were this godlike deity and you knew the position of every particle in the universe and the momentum of those particles, then you could see the future and the past because you knew where everything was and the path it was taking. And then, mm-hmm. and then he talked about this idea that there's no... Like we we like to think that we're doing the thing that we want to do, but that would suggest that we're not actually. It's all predetermined because the particles that make us up are just doing the things that they would do even if we weren't there. But then hmm. this might remind you of it. He, if you actually watched it or not, then he said the only reason any of this uh, this idea would even work is if we existed to observe it. If we, if there's an alternate universe where we don't exist, then this idea wouldn't exist because there would be nobody there to observe oh, it. Oh man, this is too much. And then I, it's like a six minute clip, and I, he said that, and I immediately rewinded it. I was like, I did not <laughs> understand any of this. Yeah. I had to watch it like three times. To be yeah. honest, I don't yeah. understand what you just said. So he, he's yeah. so basically he's <laughs> saying <laughs> that it, everything is predetermined because particles just take the path that they take, and we're just made up of particles. And so he's saying if you can know where every particle is in the path that it's already taking, you'll know what the future is going to be like because yeah. you're going to know where those particles end up. Yeah, okay. And then I had to go to sleep. Yeah. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know nope. about that, I liked, dude. I liked his podcast with Neil deGrasse Tyson. He has like three of them. I, have I can't, to read I can't to watch stand Neil deGrasse Tyson, he, and neither can Joe Rogan. Yeah, and he Joe, interrupts him so much. Joe can barely hide it. Yeah. Yeah. There's the, the most recent one, like... I think the first two, he was cool with it, and then, like on the last one, like he interrupted Joe like the whole time, and you could tell Joe was getting pretty mad about it. <laughs> so it wasn't right even now. like good stuff. He no. would just change topics in Joe, the middle yeah. of what Joe was Joe saying. Joe would just try to like you know kind of put his two cents on something, and then Neil would just jump in there. Just start talking about cars. Uh, yeah, yeah. I he's, can't stand he's him. Smart dude. Yeah. 
So about cars. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Me and Chad taking a road trip tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Where are you going? No idea. Missouri. Oh, you're to just look at look at drunk. vehicles. Oh, that'll be fun. Have fun doing that. No. Have you guys seen the Pixar theory that like all the yes, movies are connected? Are all yes. Connected. That one really creeps me they out. They are. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Aren't they all? Aren't they though? They are, but there's some jumps you have to take. Like, how did we get to cars? There's from a cars life? like toy, like in something. Yeah, like. but like, there's no people in that movie. There, oh, I get what you're saying. There, there's a well, couple of places in 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 the whole thing that are like it's a little bit of a reach. But, it but then the rest of it, yeah, but it, but it still kind of works. Yeah. And then there's a few places where you're like, oh, yeah. Well, it's just enough to acknowledge, like, in each episode. Like, so, for example, in, I don't remember which one, but there is, like, Lightning McQueen little toy somewhere. Yeah. So that just, oh, you know what would be so cool is if, like, <laughs> this is this is related. This is related. Okay. <laughs> Y'all. Like, if, <laughs> if, um, like, it's all, like, the same universe, but, like, time the time between like each movie is like so much that the evolution happens. Well, that's the idea. That, that's, that's the idea it, behind it, Monsters okay. Inc. Yeah, yeah. Because like, so like cars used to be able to talk or no, they couldn't talk but then they've evolved where they like, could talk. No, I think the idea is that it goes, it goes Wally and then Bugs Life because the tree they live under is in, is the one they plant at the end of Wally. Yeah. And then it goes to um, cars because the people and Wally are riding around on those chairs all the time anyway. Yeah. So they never moved past that, and so they, they the just turn just into cars. The cars. They Ooh. they're just living cars. Okay. And okay. then the last jump is Monsters Inc. It's like how do you get from that to Monsters Inc. From cars to monsters. But I think the Back idea is that they used all the oil powering the cars, and now they have to do children screaming. That's like their power oh. source. But and the doors aren't doors to other places, they're doors back in time. Oh wow. And then oh. Boo comes into the future and then goes back to the past to Brave, where she's the witch and brave. And that's a fact because the witch and brave carved Mike and Sully. And, and she and goes she indoors goes and disappears. And, and goes to other places. Wow. <laughs> so we know what the bookends are and we okay. know Bug's life and happens more, after Wally. Well, it's like Toy Story. Like yeah. Up, like where's Up and all that. Uh, up, do, up doesn't have any I, like repercussions I say, I though. Feel like up and The Incredibles are the only ones that aren't really. Incredibles but, uh, is in the '60s. That's that's all we. It's like the 1960s. I but just it's know weird, that though. there was a video that connects every single one. There's like 13 Pixar movies or something yeah. like that, yeah. or like 10 or 11. Well, there's more now. There's a yeah. lot more now. And like there's a mm. video connecting each one of them. So there's something. Not like each one. Like nice. to everyone, but you know, it jumps from one connects to this one connects to that one. Um, See, so have the you table. Guys, sorry, 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 sorry. Have you have you guys seen what Germany has set up for, as far as like experimentation for uh, the coronavirus? No. So they've set up. They've set up. <laughs> concerts. Historically, this hasn't gone well. <laughs> <laughs> they set up <laughs> concerts. Um, I think I might have seen like this. live concerts to to see about <clears throat> the spread of the virus and they they had three i think three different concerts one that was like pre-pandemic type concerts 1500 people full band they gave i think they uh they they gave everybody like this contact tracker like a, a gps i don't know how it works didn't read that far into the uh, the the article and then they used uh fluorescent uh uh, and a hand sanitizer mm. so they can see all of the surfaces that everybody's touching <laughs> and then they did a like during pandemic with like masks and and like social distancing and all of that um with the same thing with the the contact trackers and the um and i think it, it actually contacts it, it tracks how many other people you come in like close contact with and then they did um uh, they like did one hybrid. with like less well yeah they kind of they did it with like less, less people capacity, more space less capacity yeah same thing so capacity yeah so we haven't they haven't had the result, heard results yet but they're but they're talking about like I want to know we're right in the vaccine huh I want to know we're right in the vaccine last I heard like three or four weeks ago stage that three the trials. Oxford people over in like the UK or whatever you know like pretty much have one well now now I guess Trump okayed plasma somehow yeah, I just, so I heard it's that emergency helps. treatment. Yeah, for if, emergency treatment. If you're but like dying been, from like it, they, they're even saying that it hasn't even been tested. I but. they know that if you have the antibodies and you get the antibodies in your system <laughs> while you have it, you're gonna fight it off really fast. So here's okay. here's something really interesting. Um, 
So I have a... Well, Ash has a cousin. So it's, you know, cousin-in-law. Oh. Um, that got COVID. Twice okay. removed. Yeah. She got COVID. She tested positive for it for like a month and a half or two. Yeah. <clears throat> Still kept coming back positive. Well, it's... No, it's... It's like she was positive for a couple weeks, and then she tested negative, and she was okay. But then she started testing positive again. And here's the thing. She didn't have, like, any sickness symptoms. And she's always been a little off, but for the most part, normal. Okay? But this, this COVID thing, ever since she got it, has made her, like, like I don't know, like, non-responsive. Like, she will walk around, and she she's, like, you know, she's not like that. She's not like a vegetable, but she, like... Well, it's just like walks around, is quiet, doesn't really, is almost like checked out like all the time. Hmm. It's like uh, messed with their mind. Uh, lights are on, nobody's home. Kind of, sort of. Weird. I know. Hmm. That She's is just weird. That full is weird, panic Charlie. mode. Yeah. It's so weird. You know what, Charlie? You're right. About You're right. What? <laughs> I stay oh, that's like weird. <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder what the likelihood that I've, that I've already had it is. I think having, here's the having, thing. I think the likely every single day up until when masks were required, which is like I didn't really care, but it was like <clears throat> nobody's gonna make me while I was at work running a drive-through. I, I didn't really care. Well, me too. Um, I've, I've so, wondered that because I come into contact with people from all over. Yeah, and I come in contact yeah. with probably not the most sanitary people. I've been working <laughs> like, the whole time. Yeah, me too. I haven't stopped working, and I've been in. I go into six, seven, eight people, yeah. different people's houses a day. Yeah. yeah. And you can't get the you can't just go in and get the test to see if you have had it at one point. Yeah. That's not the one they're giving. Exactly. Yeah. And so those are expensive. I mean, it's, yeah. to answer your question, Chad, it's probably I think it's more likely than you think, but you still probably have it. Yeah. I think well, if you I, if you don't also know, it's fake. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, not you real. can't have what's oh, not real. I, for, I forgot actually that it's not real. <laughs> it's not real. You can't have something that's not real, Chad. Yeah. What an idiot. Come on. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chad's, 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 Chad's driving me five hours tomorrow to go look at like three or four vehicles. Where are you going Why? in Missouri? Why so de- so Why defensive? Are you going to Kansas sounds City? Stupid. What? Well, because <laughs> I'm going up. Uh, it's close. Yeah. I was just guessing. Usually, when people go five hours into Missouri, they're going to Kansas City it's or St. Louis. But there's like a few, only two a places. Few stops along the way with some. Oh, okay. I, I saw a thing that was like. Man, Missouri sucks so bad. The two places that matter are almost out trying to get out of Missouri. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, One's named after the state, the other state. Yeah. So, what, what cars are you looking at? I'm looking at like three Ford Excursions and then a Ford Runner. So. Okay. Are they all? Are the Excursions all diesel? No. So I, I decided. I decided against the diesel. Why? Because a, I don't tow. B, they're immensely more expensive like like Main, to maintain like f- that and and, and cost yeah like well, i yeah. found one for a v10 which and i've been doing a bunch of research they say you know if you if you take basic care of the v10s they're pretty good too now a diesel will last you like half a million miles and uh, the v10 will get you probably 300 but right, that's not the point point is you know they're more expensive to maintain and general upkeep and so, like, I'm this one. I'm going to look at one that's like seventy five hundred. Then it's got like a hundred and actually, this one's a really good deal from what I've seen. It's got one hundred and thirty five thousand. That's the lowest mileage mm. for that price of what I've seen. Yeah, most of them want that price for close to two hundred, and then for over two hundred thousand miles for the diesel ones, the good diesel engines, people want over like twenty for it. Yeah. Wow. So well, that's and so our bus, our tour bus has yeah. a V eight seven three diesel. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, the only thing that we've had to do on it. Is the alternator? That's and, pretty. That was pretty expensive though. Drive shaft. Yeah, the alternator. How much was like six hundred dollars or something? No, eight fifty for a refurbished one, like wow. a rebuilt one, and brand new one because it's not the normal size that goes on. Like right. Because I even gave like we were, I was on our way to uh, to start a tour and like before we even got out of Nashville, it. Oh, I, right. I remember that. Issues. Yeah. And I called, like, Advanced Auto Parts, which was in the same parking lot as us, and I gave him everything about the car, the van, and he's like, yeah, we got one. It was, like, 150 bucks. I'm like, mm. okay. But then I called the guy that, like, owned the bus before us. He's like, no, that's not going to be the one. The guy, that's not it, it's man. It's not it. And so it took us a day and a half to find the right one, and a rebuilt one was $850, and a yeah. new one would have been. How like, much is it to get your oil changed? 
It's like 150 bucks. Uh, I think last time. I mean, I do it myself, so oh, it's yeah. yeah, it's it's way easy on it because it's so high. Under yeah, there. like I can get however it, much no the problem. oil is. That's what it yeah, costs. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it's like well, you gotta have 40 I think bucks. It's, I think you gotta get like four gallons of oil. Yeah, it is, it is a lot. It's 15 and quarts. Fun fact: I have a <laughs> we ran it pretty much almost out of oil. <laughs> <laughs> that's good for it <laughs> once. They say they say you should do that. <laughs> they say you should get it's it just, all the way like out. Your, it's just like your <laughs> phone. You let it die like yeah. every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> they say it's good for all, all that fluid to get out of there so the uh, engine actually heats up even more. Yeah. And that the parts it gets will actually warm. shave down other parts of it. Yeah. That's how that'll work. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I'm going to I'm gonna make some clip. Uh, this this can be in. I'm gonna make some clips this week from the old ones, just like extra funny moments, like when you were trying to play the video and then it was actually the Soviet national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> Why did like I not that. see that? Why have I not heard? I'll that make yet? like really clean edits of those, and then we can put those on social and share those. Yeah. Why did I? I don't remember that. Was that the I first did. one? Yeah. We yeah. Were trying to find you were the trying road. to. <laughs> yeah. And it was Music. like. Ba, ba, that reminds ba, ba, me, dude. Ba, ba, ba. I found that. Here, y'all talk. I'm no, we, we, we don't pull it up. Don't pull it up. Yeah, don't pull it up. We heard it. We already know. <laughs> anyway, all right. Do Starting it. from here. This is this is sleeping material. Do you? Um, d- d- what did you do? What did you do this week? How's working at a restaurant right now? Uh, it's interesting. Um, are people like really freaking out? Like, are you having to hassle people weird. about we the have, masks? Some occasionally we have some of those people that are like, someone called his boss a Marxist. A Marxist. <laughs> yeah, dude. Nice. Wait, wait, they he heard that like, online. They heard that on yeah. Joe Rogan. <laughs> so yeah, this old guy Marxist didn't finishes. want to put on a mask and and started yelling at the manager. Like after the manager kind of shoot him out because like. Technically, we can't even let you in. Yeah, if you don't have one. So yeah. before they even come in, if they don't have one, we but, can come up to the door. When you get seated and you get your drink and then your food, then you can take it off. Does not affect Listen, this you is not. This is not political. This is not political. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, liberal. I think I think <laughs> ma- majority of the people are kind of like me. It's like I'll do what I'm supposed to do because I'm not an asshole. But like. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, kind that's of still up for debate. It's kind of like uh, I feel like they don't really care. Like they don't care to wear it or not to wear it. It's just whatever people. I, they, yeah, I totally to agree. It, they're gonna wear it, and that's kind of how I am. That, like, that's and so people are like, you have to wear it. I'm like, okay. The, it's this has revealed the two worst kinds of people: the kind of people who will not do what they're told because they're told to do it, because the government told you to do it. You I'm think it's authoritarian? It. Yeah. You wore your seatbelt the whole way to the restaurant, <laughs> I bet. Like, I bet you did. Yeah. 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 It's like, like I got to wear I... this on my face. That's the mark of the beast. Probably not, huh? <laughs> Probably, Probably not. Probably not, though, huh? Probably not. All right, Chad, here Probably you go. My... This is the clearest one. You this... heard this too. No, you didn't. I promise you didn't hear this. You ready? This is the rumble strips. That's actually pretty cool. I know. <laughs> <laughs> was that worth it? Are you glad we watched that? No, that was not yeah. worth it. That, I, got, I got nothing from that. Okay, so the other worst kind of people are the people that are... are They will do it but not understand why they're doing it. They don't understand anything about it. They just know that they have been told to do it, and so they will scream at anybody for not doing it but not understanding why they're yeah, doing it in the yeah, first place. Yeah. These people are just as bad. It's the horseshoe. Yeah. Most people are right here, but the extreme <laughs> people, they're in the same spot at the There's top. Like, yeah. So I saw someone reposted. Oh, I was an old coworker of mine. She reposted uh, this pastor on, uh, on Facebook. So real quick, preface this. We all know the purpose of masks, right? Spit. It's not to, to protect ourselves. It's to protect others. Other people, yes, yeah. and it's not for air. Your right. cloth mask does not filter viruses out of the air. Your cloth <laughs> mask does not filter <laughs> coronavirus out of the air. If it did, you would have it suctioned to your face. Yeah, it's for droplets. It's so you don't spit yeah. on the people Wait, around so you. you what? Spit. 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 Anyway, so... Um, Okay, yeah, sorry, I forgot what was going. So this pastor, <laughs> this pastor uh, posted this thing, and uh, he was he was basically, I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible. He was going on a rant about, he went into like this uh, Dunkin' Donuts, and uh, they required a mask. And I guess the state he lives in, you know, like kind of here where we live, places posted masks were required mm-hmm. for a while, but then the governor made it a mandate, you know, probably yeah. like a few weeks later. Yeah. So... 
it was kind of loosely enforced before that. Well, same thing was happening in this guy's state. You know, they put it on the store on the door, but it wasn't a state mandate yet. Yeah. Okay? So he would go in there and wouldn't wear his mask ever. He would always get the same thing, two coffees or whatever. Then one day he goes in there and uh, the manager comes out. And the manager wasn't mean. You know, he was like, hey, sir. He's like, uh, you know, next time you come in to our store, you know, I want you to please be wearing a mask. And then the dude, this pastor of a church, starts going off on this dude. And he's yeah. calling everyone that wears masks sheep. I'm yeah. sure you've heard that. Yeah. Sheep. And then he's like... Well, here's a, here's my question. If my if your mask works so good, why do I gotta wear mine? Because if wear everybody like, thinks that, then yeah. nobody will wear one. I was like, one. you don't get it. I was like, that's not the purpose. I said it's. I I, I didn't obviously say that. And this this has been going on on Facebook, yes. but sheep is a weird thing for a Christian to be insulting yeah. people by 100%. saying. Hundred percent. I know. We are yeah, literally it's, sheep it's, in the Bible. Okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> the <laughs> Lord is my shepherd. Like. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you ask any Christian to say three verses, that's one of them. That's one yeah. of them. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, like... <laughs> Makes me that cringe was, that out was of the, my skin. That was the bulk of it. But the dude was like... He's like, well, it be it became a mandate last night or yesterday, you know, um, or today, I guess. It became a mandate. And the pastor's like, no, it didn't. You're lying to my face because you've had that that sign on the door for the last three weeks. So I know you're lying. It's been a mandate for three weeks and you just care now. And I was like... <sighs> <laughs> idiot idiot it's like yeah okay Gosh. and yeah okay and i care now and. so okay worst case i care now i had i i had this is a example of a a thing i can't stand when people do i i found out one of my greatest pet peeves is when people think that you're lying and so they just ask more questions about something you said it's like i i can't stand when people think i'm just writing them off or like i'm just lying yeah so my boss Kyle He's a great guy, but he does this all the time. And I think it's because he gets genuinely gaslit all the time. But the other day, he calls me, and he's like, Hey, I'm out here at this site. I need to fly the drone, but it says we're in controlled airspace. The drone won't take off. Can you Google how to take the drone off? You know, how to force the drone to take off. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think you can, but I'll Google. And so I Google, you know. I go to sites. I make sure it's not just the DJI forum. Yeah. Couldn't he have just Googled it? I, I don't know, man. Okay. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. You I mean, Kyle's Kyle's a quirky guy. Cool guy to hang around with. Quirky. But yeah, he's like, he's quirky. Um, <laughs> Still image of that face, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I Google it. I text him back and I was like, yeah, I, I can't find anything. Like, I think you have to get in touch with DJI and say that they have mislabeled the airspace and there's like a place to do that on the website but it takes some time yeah and he's like he's like that's weird because you know i could take it off here six months ago i'm like oh you're right i made it all up you know what you know what you caught me you caught me (laughs) Uh, people do that to me all the time say dude probably i'm pretty chill like as long as I know you haven't known me very long, Charlie. As long as you two have known me, like there's one instance where I think I've gotten really mad at someone, and it was via text in a group text. I, I you recall know. This, this. Was it a J long. or a C name? It was a C. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I believe we were all waiting at an IHOP. Oh, it was right before that. Yep. 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 So, anyhow, that's that's one thing with with dudes that do stuff like that. But really, I guess you know, scumbag guys. And people, I know call which it, C it was now. People calling me a liar, especially when yeah. I know I'm not lying, that's what makes me so mad. Like one time, you know, I guess I can say his name. He's been on the podcast, Jeff. You know, I've talked about him a couple of times. Uh, one time at work, I don't think you're working there. Um, you know how sales is. Guys are real touchy. You know, so if this customer came in, and uh, so you guys are kind of aware, if you've worked with a guest before and it's like a new day like if it's the same day you can just go up to them that's kind of a rule but if it's like a week later they come in and you recognize them like you can't talk to them unless they ask for you got it that's a rule really um yeah because if they want to work with you you know they'll ask for you and if not either they just so they don't feel obligated right yeah if they didn't like so this group of three people came in it was two guys and a girl a husband and wife and like their friend and uh I had helped them a long time ago, actually. It had been several months. And uh, they were back to look at something else. And so a coworker of mine, I'll, I'll tell you later, um, 
he uh, was talking to, he was greeting two of them. And then the third guy is like the main guy. He like looked at me and he like waved at me. And that's just again, so you know, if like someone sees you and waves you or whatever, that counts as them wanting to work with you. So he waved at me. And then so I went up there and talked to him. I was like, hey man, whatever. So I go and help them. They buy a cheap mattress. And uh, I come back out and like, like Jeff and this other guy, really the other guy was like mad at me. Okay. Tall, tall, dark headed dude, Christian guy. And then Jeff. Jeff's not really mad at me. He's just egging it on. And he's like, he's telling me that, you know, I went up to, what I guess he's not like messing, but he kind of is. Is like, that kind of like he's serious, but he's putting a joke? Yeah, he's, he's saying, just poking the bear a little he's bit. He's like saying, oh no, dude, you went up to him. He's like, I saw you go up to him and just do this and da da da. And uh, they, didn't, they didn't wave at you and blah, whatever. And so, like, he was, I guess he was being serious enough. And so that was just like, that set me off. And you know, Jeff's like 60 years old mm. and he's like a real nice guy. But I went up to him. I like got in his face. I said, you call me a liar one more time and we're going to have a huge problem. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone else after that, they're like, you need to apologize to Jeff. I was like, why? For asking him to not call you a yeah, liar. Yeah. Amazing. And it was actually, you know, it wasn't even like I was starting to be physical with him. He had a water bottle in his hand. I, this, this is how silly this kind of is. And I said, I said, Jeff, I said, if you say it again, I'm going to smack this water bottle right out of your hand. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone, like, you need to apologize to Jeff. And uh, I was like, why? And they're like, uh, if you would have said that to me, we would have been fighting. I was, like, I was like, really? Bet. I was like, if I would have knocked, threatened to knock a water bottle out of your hand. And I guess I was getting pretty aggressive about it just because I didn't know what else to do. I'm not going to say, I'm going to punch you in the face, Jeff. So next best thing I can do is smack a water bottle out of your hand. That's, that's the second best. <laughs> yeah. I feel I feel like you have. As long as I've known you, you you have two. I'm zero what, to hundred. What, what I'm gonna call bad traits. First one is is yeah. I feel like if something gets you angry, you that that's it. The the roof on the top has been blown. Yeah, it's done. And your other bad trait is is I think you really get off on trying to embarrass other people. Oh, absolutely. I think Have you I, talked about Evan's superpower on this podcast? My ability to say things quietly? You you don't say things quietly. You say them perfectly audible and people just don't hear. You just I have, you, he can select who hears what I he's saying. How, I don't see how that's related, but yeah. <laughs> because but. it's embarrassing to the people around you because we're just panicking the whole time <laughs> thinking they're going to hear. We were at uh, a middle school where what school is it? playing basketball were you there for this one oh, when the uh, principal came out oh, yeah don't dunk on the, the yeah uh, they had new basketball goals and we're just out there it's just in this parking lot during the summer so school's closed the principal of that school happened to be driving by and so he th was perfectly kind super nice drives up he's like hey boys i just wanted to let you know that those are brand new so don't be dunking on them or anything because we want to keep them nice and you know we're all like yeah sure man blah 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 and evan the whole time the second the guy pulls up and rolls his window down he's like oh, go away go away <laughs> Go away. He's like, oh, Go he's away. Like, oh, do you think we can dunk? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just straight, just has it. Oh, go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Is, we can't dunk. Go away. Go that away. Is, that is a pretty unique gift of mine. Like, Tell I the story about your dad at the DMV. I don't even remember. Oh, I remember. I've told hundreds of people this story. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, I think I have a clue. With the, but apparently with you the custom it license me. plate. Okay, it's like I know. I think you know enough of this story to tell it better than I do. <laughs> well, you, they, I mean, long story short, your your dad caught on that you could do this, and so <laughs> I think I I'm gonna this. laugh too hard to tell it. You you were like, okay, you're at the DMV with your dad, and you were like, how much does a custom license plate cost? And he's like, oh, the, she's like telling the lady, he's like, I oh, don't listen to him, don't listen to him, and then he was like, he probably just wants to <laughs> on it or something, and she was like. I'm sorry, what did you say? And he's like, oh, uh, he probably just wants to put, like, on it or something. <laughs> That's right. That's better. He changed That's better. It to something That's better. worse and <laughs> more racist. I remember that. Yeah. I think about that, like, every day. <laughs> every day. Yeah, dude, I can, that is true. And I, a lot of the guys at work, because I do that to customers all the time. Like, I can say stuff at the perfect decibel level to where everyone around, around me you. hears it 
but they can't. someone standing at that door would not. But have it's heard me. the right yeah. tone of voice too. Yeah. Like when you're going, oh, go away, yeah, go away. It's because I sound like I'm being nice. Yeah, yeah. they're not yeah. actually now, thinking about what you're saying. One time I yeah. almost got clo- like caught. It was in a. Clot. Yeah, I almost got a blood clot. (laughs) But it was senior year. It's when I was in band. We were inside rehearsing. And um, I still think Mr. Ford heard me and just played it off, dude. Because um, it was... I'm already stressed out. Everyone was laughing, you know, and saying something. And you remember... I guess I shouldn't say his name. My ex-girlfriend's brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. He was obviously in there. And we always like to make fun of him. Or not make fun of him. Just kind of egg at him. And then... uh, he was he was sitting pretty far away, so I had to say it loud enough for him to hear it, but also loud enough, you know, where he the director, Mr. Ford, didn't hear it. So you know, everyone was laughing about something. Jason did so, said something, and he's like, "Oh, I remember." Mr. Ford was like, "We'll have uh, Jason, uh, the the Marine, climb up there like a spider monkey," and everyone's like, "Ha ha ha ha!" I remember that. And I was like, "Jason's got a small wiener," like, <laughs> <laughs> and like, like everyone's like, I don't know what it was. Everyone stopped laughing at like the exact same moment, and. Literally, everyone in that entire room heard me and looked at me, and Mr. Ford was just looking at his music, and I, dude, my heart dropped. I was like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "I, I done goofed," and he didn't do anything. And everyone was looking at me. They're like, "You dodged the bullet." Yeah, dude. I was like, "You dodged that bullet so hard, bro." <laughs> I think I said his name. It's I. It's all right. Yeah, you, went, you didn't say went, anything bad about him. I know. I went to the lengths to like not say his name, and then I just said it. It's it's all right. Uh, we'll fix like- it. I feel like there's a lot of instances in band in which there were things that we shouldn't have been doing, but we did it anyway. And there was yeah. always that kind of like, did, did, did they know that just happened? That was most for, of the for, time. For example, like Drumline would always, every single game, have candy in the stands and they'd like put it in their hat. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> just for some reason, Drumline did that. And we'd always have it up Not there while we were supposed there. to. <laughs> yeah, I remember it was while you were there. I don't remember doing that. They I, remember, kind of I, I must have never participated. They thought you were the mole. <laughs> You were telling Mr. Ford. I What's the worst Mr. Ford ever embarrassed you? Because I know mine right off the top of my head. Oh, my, oh, oh, mine oh. was when, so we were practicing on a Tuesday after or Tuesday evening, so like the two and a half hour practice or whatever, and uh, the other band director who is the percussion band or the drumline band director had told me, because I was playing bass that year, that... Mr. Morris or yeah, the guy that got fired? Morris. Okay. Because I was at the very end of the bass line that I needed to make sure I was keeping in line with all of the other bass... Uh, bass drum players and so I started doing that and I would be looking at the drum major and then looking at my line doing this like the whole time and I guess Mr. Ford just happens to see me at the one instant like he's not looking looking and then he tells everybody to stop and then just starts chewing me out for not looking at the band director yeah. and I was just kind of like I'm just doing what I'm told yeah there like, was a while like, where he, he really he harped care. on that he, 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 the point he, what he said he already said it and he's not going back on it so mm-hmm. it's happening he talked to you in a way where like you couldn't say anything back it felt like we yeah. talked about this last week like when you were like a five year old kid and an adult was yeah. getting mad at you you felt like you couldn't say anything that's how he talked and to the you. other guys weren't like that Mr. Morris no. was uh-uh. never like no, that absolutely Mr. Not. Ford had a way of saying things where you knew the second you hit the period in that sentence the conversation was completely over yeah it was I've, so I've got, disheartening. I've got, a, I've got a tie for mine. I brought it down so I wouldn't forget. <laughs> so when I was a sophomore, you know, he obviously didn't like sophomore, like entry level as much as the seniors just because he didn't know them. And uh, I, I, as a sophomore, was the only sophomore in the wind ensemble my freshman year. And I was the last chair. I was the seventh, seventh chair uh, in wind ensemble. And uh, the first chair girl was a senior in the next band. So she was challenging me. So that she would get that spot and I would go down to the next band. And the freaking Ray Ray will like had me convinced that uh, all the seniors in Wind Ensemble didn't want me in there. So I said, well, I'm just going to tank my challenge so I can fall out. Somehow that made it back to Well, and him. being in the first band was really stressful too. Yeah. It was completely yeah. different. Well, see, here's the thing. That made it back to Mr. Ford. And then he comes in my seventh period class, pulls me out of class, and yells at me in the hallway. Which I guess it wasn't out of class. It was in between classes. So everyone was walking. I had already made it. 
No, he was waiting outside the door of my seventh period geometry class. That means he went out of his way to oh, yeah. look you up on the grade book, yeah, find did. your schedule, and then leave the band room, yeah. which is on as that, far away yeah. from they, the they school. Call it the east wing. Yeah, yeah. it's like, as far away from everything else yeah. is to it's a, it's your class. It's like a quarter mile away, honestly, in steps. But um, yeah, he was waiting out there, and he just like chewed me out, dude. And he said, "If you fail this challenge," he said, "You're going to the bottom of the last band." And uh, I failed it, but he didn't do that. And uh, hold on, hold on, I got the one it was <laughs> well, tied for. Story, but the ahead. one it was tied for. So I was a junior, end of junior year, about to be a senior. I was pretty much the shoe in to be the section leader because I was really the only choice <laughs> senior uh, that next year. And uh, what happened was it was at the point of the year where everything was done, last concerts were done, and everyone just hung out in the band room. Uh, and so me, Chase, I'm going to say the names, me, Chase, Jesse, and Alex Stillwell, I don't know if I just say that, mm-hmm. went out in the courtyard kind of by the band room and we're mm-hmm. throwing a Frisbee. And then I guess that was a huge no-no. Like, we're just throwing the Frisbee and now I know where the door just busts open and he's like get in now and so we go in there and then he's like yelling at us and then uh he looks at me he's like and you uh, mr supposed to be section leader what do you think this was okay or something like that and like again like i didn't know what to say i didn't want to be like i legitimately thought this was okay yeah like it's like having having fun you mean yeah he would have just wrecked me (laughs) living breathing so he the other thing that makes it hard for you to say anything back, especially when you're out on the field, is because he's got the microphone with the speakers. Literally a nothing. megaphone. Yeah, and you're shouting. So it's like, I feel like shouting from down there doesn't have nearly as much effect as like talking. I right was here. looking. Yeah. No, <laughs> but, it, well, and you sound pathetic, and most of the other people don't hear you. So even if you were right, it's still embarrassing because nobody else knows. I think, I think it was my sophomore year, so your senior year. There was like a week where I was in uh, the top band. Uh, I had worked up through the, so I was like in the middle of the pack on like the second uh, in the second yeah. band. I worked through it. All the challenges got to like the last chair of the first band. I was in there for a week and I was like, this sucks. Mm-hmm. So I botched my ch- my challenge so the person would get in front of me and then I just stayed in second yeah. band the whole time and yeah. I did just enough to stay in second but not enough to get into first because I didn't want to deal with that. Yeah. The worst he ever embarrassed me, and this is so well. It the worst I ever was embarrassed, but it was it wasn't because of him. But it was the one I told last week about messing up the dance routine. Mm-hmm. But the worst I was ever embarrassed was I was in top band. I was a junior, so I felt like I didn't belong there. And the trumpet section, it was like, I mean, it was like I I sucked <laughs> compared to everybody <laughs> else yeah. in there. It was yeah, it was stacked. Um. And so I was like, I don't belong in here. And I think the same day I had literally just broken up with somebody that I was dating. And so I was just like, I would play and then disassociate. And then play and then disassociate. And I guess I was sitting. Was this the big breakup that you endured no, in high school? No, okay. this was another one. Uh, I guess I was sitting. I had, you know, your trumpet's not that big. I'm just sitting and I'm just kind of sitting like this with my trumpet in my hands. And then we would play. And I knew my part. Like it was we weren't like early in the semester or anything and he we were playing and then um we stopped and so i go back we start playing again and then he stops us early and so i'm like somebody so i go back to sitting like that and he's like why are we sitting like we're on the toilet (laughs) and looking at me and i'm like (laughs) and and then i i'm just like i'm not sitting like i'm on the toilet so i don't look and he's like church why are we sitting like we're on the toilet and everybody's looking at me. I was just like, what? Is this really that big of a deal? Is this affecting the band that much? Because this practice is a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> he got mad at me one time. This is very short. This was my senior year. We need Charlie to participate. I know. Sorry. Let me finish Charlie the story. Has this, is, this is quick. This is, this is quick, none. guys. This is going to be a shit story. It's try, I'm trying to make it quick. Let me talk. <laughs> so senior year, you know, I played the drum set uh-huh. uh, in the show. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was trying to... Every Monday, we would watch film. Yeah. Like we were freaking football stars. Yeah. And uh, then he was he was wanting to tell me something. And for a month, dude. Wait, wait, wait. I, you were like watching film of, 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 of us marching yeah. halftime. Yeah. March. He yeah. recorded yeah. it every week. That's yeah. This is real. That's homeschool level aim. All right. So anyway, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> 
So he was going to tell me something. And for like a month, dude, I had some weird crap going on with my stomach where I would get like a ridiculous like stomach pain and it would like not go away hardly ever. No, no one was able to figure out what it was and it just went away after like a month. But I like had to go to the bathroom and I would like, I would, I would like alternate between like constipation and like the squirts. You had like IBS, like temporary IBS. Kind of, sort of. And so I was getting wrecked in the bathroom. Okay. In the middle of film. So I ran to the bathroom and I went in there and I walked back in and he like yelled at me. Like he was like, where are you at? Blah, blah, blah. And then he got mad. And what was I supposed to be like? It's like, um, yeah, you know, I was destroying the toilet. I go poo poo. Because my stomach was killing me. But that's it. All right, Charles. On stage. It, it, it wasn't that On bad, stage. but you should have been like, I need to go to the hospital. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Feel bad. yeah. I, I need an ambulance. What was your most embarrassing onstage moment? Because uh, you're in a band band. Yeah. I'm in a real band. There's no hiding when you're a three piece. Yeah. March. Yeah. Um, I think so. That wasn't even all that embarrassing. Wherever, like I was, we were playing at a place here in Lincoln. Like <laughs> they were trying to start a venue, and it like we were the only band that ever played there. Um, oh, nice. But uh, they had like a little bit of a drum riser, and I was like working on my stage presence and being a little more like, like uh, lively, lively. Yeah, fill in the it. space. Yeah, exactly. And I was up on the. I don't know if I was on the kick drum or if i was just up on, up on the drum riser and i jumped and i straight up when i landed i landed on the side of my ankle oh uh, and i just went down like i played the whole song on my back i was gonna say like, i was in the middle of the stage just playing the rest of the song on my back <laughs> and then we finished the song and i got up and i played the rest of the set um but i definitely like sprained it couldn't walk on it for like oh, two or three weeks after that that's amazing yeah it was and everybody great. definitely knew Oh, everybody. They definitely, definitely knew. knew. Yeah, oh, yeah, they knew. Um, the other one was like, uh, I think it was after that show. It was it was probably, I don't know, same year or something like that. Later on, we were playing at a place down in Fort Smith, and I was wearing, I was wearing it like a flannel, long sleeve flannel with a shirt underneath it, unbuttoned. I started the set like that, but you've seen how much I move around, and you see how much how how worked, hot we how hot and sweaty we get, and like. I don't like my stage outfit now is like short shorts and a short sleeve shirt. Mm-hmm, like, yeah. I can't wear anything else. I was wearing this flannel and like two songs in, I'm dying. And so right after the song, I try to <laughs> take the flannel off without taking my guitar off and it doesn't work. <laughs> it does not. Like no. the guitar just slides right off my shoulder and it just slams to the oh. ground. And it, like I didn't mute it or anything. So it's just <laughs> boom, boom. I'm like, ah. Oh. One time I yeah. accidentally pulled down my sweats and exposed my wiener in the band room. Nice. <laughs> accidentally or on purpose? Accidentally. I kidnapped the governor. Accidentally <laughs> or on purpose. I was carrying a, the the gear bag that had all the stands in it for percussion to yeah. go, like the stands. Yeah. And uh, it was so heavy and it like caught my sweats <laughs> and like I, I, I just started to like let it go and straight up and it popped out for about five seconds. You're holding the bag. You're like, I can't put this down. <laughs> so, so one time, I don't know why. The, so oh, no. for some reason, Charlie's story reminded me of this. So I had a brief stint where like me and some guys like jammed together. It wasn't really a band. It was me, Chase Colvin, Eduardo Garcia, and Will Tinney. Mm-hmm. We had like a little thing going. And uh, our first gig was a uh, like a fundraiser for some something at school, I don't know what the cause was, mm-hmm. but it was an overnight thing. And our slot mm-hmm. was like 3 a.m. Mm-hmm. So we played, that's irrelevant to this story, but I thought you might want to know. Mm-hmm. And uh, we played, and so our lead singer and bassist, he was uh, playing, you know, getting it was an instrumental part, and he was playing, getting into it. And then our one of the guitarists, Eduardo, was like playing a solo. And I guess Chase had never, like, besides church, I mean, I don't know if he's ever played. I mean, I feel like he has, but played like a live, like rock-ish concert. And he like straight up, I can't, I don't want to demonstrate on one of you guys because it's weird. But he like gets up on Eduardo while he's playing a solo. Like he's like, like, like all up on him like that while he's playing. And I'm like drumming and I'm like looking at him. Like nothing's like, everyone can clearly see me looking at him. I'm like, 
I was like, what is going on? <laughs> and this after, isn't what we Afterward, we went to Waffle House because it's the only place that's open. I was like, dude, what was that? <laughs> He's like, I have no idea. But, I, with, I just was mo- feeling it. With my other group, uh, the Redlands, we're a little newer, so we, we still have quite a few kinks to work out and things like that when we're playing live shows, but sometimes they'll do stuff like, I'm kind of like, what? anybody else seeing this? Am yeah. I the only one? Like, yeah. like, uh, like, and so, especially like, Almost just kind of like being on stage, like like stage presence stuff. Like if they'll, like if they're just standing there, and I'm kind of like, why why is nobody else addressing that they're not doing anything? Yeah. Oh, so lack like, of doing stuff. Sometimes. And yeah. Then sometimes and then occasionally, it's the thing they do is kind of awkward on there. Like they uh, they hump the other <laughs> yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, my, but we've gotten a lot better with it though. My wife punched me in the face once on stage. That's amazing. Didn't you also slap her with your bass? Oh yeah, I've hit her. So, in the I've head. seen that happen. I've a hit lot. her in the head several times. Didn't something but, like that happen? But in... I was impressed by her punching me in the there face, you go. Like, straight some, up. Some Why did she power? punch you? Well, so it wasn't on purpose. So it was just like one of the part of the songs where like I started head banging, like I went down. Oh and she yeah. She was coming up with yeah. her fist, what and I was like, high? yeah, it's like. I, I, Dude, she she clocked me, dude. Why did she like, do this? Like, and you helped. <laughs> I know, right? I, I went down into. I don't know. I think she was coming up to like like throw her fist up. Or something I was gonna like say, that. yeah. Is your was, song saying yippee? <laughs> <laughs> that was at, That was in Wyoming. On that funny. weird, she, that awkward stage that like they had the choir like stand up. Charlie top, just comes up behind like, her. She's like. <laughs> <laughs> Throws a right hook. I do like, expect to see you there. It's, it's like Dwight and Angela when they're at the arcade, remember? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we better wrap this. Yeah, this yep. has been a longer one. Well, there's probably there's a lot to a take out. Yeah, yeah, I was like, so. we, we, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, like and subscribe. Hit the hit the bell. Hit the bell for notifications. Um, it's zooming in on Evan's face right now, and I'm saying it so I will do it and not be lazy this Friday when I edit this. Okay, goodbye.